I have never done this, but I would recommend against opening this on the stand as it will compromise the integrity of the evidence for future testing. Your Honor, I believe we could open the evidence and present it as such, provided the court has no objection. Well, he's telling you he recommends you not open it. So I'm going to follow his direction, okay? So, and I'm going to follow you. Okay, all right. So... All right, um, so uh, I'm going to... Do you recall what any of the, the males who got in the car were wearing? Absolutely not, no. Do you recall telling Detective Quinn that one of the guys was wearing a white shirt, a white t-shirt? No. Do you know uh, how quickly they got into your car when they, when they jumped into it at that house? No. Do you recall telling Detective Quinn that the four black males got in your car like this? Uh, at that point, I was telling whoever the detective anything to get myself out of the situation. It only gets worse from there. Trust me. Police, uh, did you initially tell the police that your car was borrowed from that house? I think initially I said that I was at the gas station and it got stolen from the gas station. So your first statement to police was that the car was stolen? Yes. It was recorded and then he erased it and uh, he re-recorded it. Re-recorded? Another statement. He said, uh, that's lies. Tell me the truth. He said, I'm going to delete it and record it again. I said, okay. You're talking about the detective? The detective. That day? Yes, sir. Do you recall telling Detective Quinn exactly what... Do you recall telling Detective Quinn that you and Brian initially told the police that the car was stolen, but now you're going to tell the truth? I don't get the form of questions to you. Do you recall telling Detective Quinn that initially you and Brian told him that the car was stolen, but now you're going to tell the truth about what really happened? Yes, I believe it was... That's the case. It, we initially said it was stolen just to get out of our, get everybody out of our hair, and uh, yeah, that was not true. Can you and Brian discuss what you would say to the police before you gave the first you statement? I stand the question, Mr. Foreman. Did you and Brian discuss that story of the car being stolen before you first spoke with the Atlanta police uh, detective? I don't believe so. I think uh, we just kind of both thought that was the best answer, and I believe that's why he erased the first statements because he separated us and asked us, and they didn't match up. So. He recorded it again. Sir, do you recall what you told the Atlanta Police Department detective on September 11, 2013? I do not recall what I told him exactly, no. Um, fair to say you don't remember a whole lot about that day back in 2013, 10 plus years ago. Is that true? That's true. All right. Um, you do remember some things, right? Vaguely. Um, you do not know who the police officer or detective or investigator was that you spoke to. Is that right? No, I do not know. So when the, the prosecutor keeps asking about Detective Quinn, Detective Quinn, you don't know if it was Detective Quinn you spoke to or someone else, right? No, and never since then. I've been getting a lot of calls from different parties. Not exactly sure which side of the party it is. Okay. Um, so I've been, I've had a few different statements over the phone and stuff like that. Um, they're okay. probably all different. All right. Whether or not it was Detective Quinn, you do remember speaking to someone that day, uh, a law enforcement officer, right? Right. And fair to say, my words, you, you lied through your teeth to the, to the, the officer. Basically, at that point, I was saying anything I could to get myself out of the situation, and a lot of things were fabricated. But one thing that you do recall is that whoever the law enforcement officer, the detective on that day was that you spoke to, you gave him a statement. And then instead of keeping that statement, that law enforcement officer erased your statement that you gave initially and then went ahead and recorded something else, right? That's what I was told, my understanding of it, yes. Okay. No one forced you to the house, right? No one came and kidnapped you from the gas station and said, hey, um, come on over to the house, right? No. You all end up at the house because you all are there looking to buy some drugs. Right. True. You all get to the house. You all are there trying to get some drugs. At some point, I heard you say, you're, you're kind of faded. You're in and out of it. Right. Um, the car leaves at some point, right? Right. You don't know what the circumstances were under, under the car leaving, right? Right. Um, you ask a lot of questions about the men getting in the car, the males getting in the car. You don't know who got in the car. I do not know who got in the car. I did not see that. Okay. So... Um, Brian is there too, Ransom, right? Right. Um, car goes at some point in your head, you're like, <laughs> car ain't here, better go find a car. Right. I don't exactly know how long it was before the, before the question of someone needed to borrow a car and it leaving. Okay. But I do remember it was a question and maybe since it didn't leave right away, I didn't really think that it was going to be my car that they were taking. Okay. So once I noticed that it was leaving, um, I definitely asked Brian what was going on. He said everything was okay. Okay. At some point, you end up, you and Brian, I think, end up going down to the gas station, right? Right. Okay. Um, cars wrecked. Cars total. Okay. 
Um, at some point after that, now obviously you're, you're there and you're like, I, I, I got to tell Marisol, Marcel. That's something. probably possibly my main worry at that point. Okay, because you got her car. Right. Her car's been wrecked. Right. You on some sort of town, some part of town. You don't know where you at. Right. Okay. She doesn't like my drug use. Doesn't. Not gonna like why I was there. Okay. And um, at some point, you end up speaking to law enforcement. Right. right? Um, your main concern at that point is trying to um, not get in trouble for um, a being high and out driving around. Right. Right. Uh, being at some location trying to buy drugs. Right? True. Being at some location taking drugs. True. Right. Uh, you end up, in your words, lying to the police officers. Or, or whatever detective investigator was you spoke to, right? Basically, I was stretching the truth and not being very truthful with my words. Okay. Um, I think you said you were going to tell them anything you could at that point to get out of trouble. At that point, yeah. All right. So whether it was, um, you know, someone took the car at the gas station or someone stole the car from some location uh, or someone took the car from the house, whatever it was you needed to say, you were going to tell law enforcement at that point. Sure. And you did, right? Sure. Okay. Um, by the time you get done talking to them, there's a couple things that you have done. True, you have uh, been out buying drugs, right? Right. And you have given a false statement to the police that they appear to know is false, right? True. Okay. Were you? Objection, Your Honor. Basis. He said that they know. What's the false. basis? What's the basis? Speculation, Your Honor. Old. At any point after, and this is September the 11th of 2013. At any point after that day or after that day, did anyone ever come back and charge you? with uh, either purchasing or attempting to purchase or purchasing um, drugs? Uh, no. Did anyone, any law, any APD, uh, detective, investigator, DA, anything, come back and charge you with giving a false statement to the police? No. Anyone ever charge you with any sort of RICO racketeering charge for yes. any of that stuff? No. Basis. Relevance? Oh. You didn't tell Detective Quinn that Brian told us some guy told him to the car? I do not recall call that, no. That sounds a little fabricated. Did the uh, officer you were speaking with ever tell you to cut to the chase? I don't believe so. I mean, he was being pretty uh, blunt and pretty pretty blunt with his words. He was being pretty cool. Uh, wasn't really being too professional. Uh, tell me that the first thing was bullshit, that uh, we needed to get our story straight and get it right. So, so you're saying that the, the detective realized your initial statement that the car being stolen was, as you say, yes, special yes. speculation? I stand you, Jason. Your testimony just now was that in your impression, when the detective said, what you just told us a couple minutes ago was bullshit, what did you mean that to me when you told you that? Did you think he believed your first story? I'm, I what? stand, hold on, I stand yes, to form the question, you can rephrase it. Sir, or, when you speak with someone and they tell you that what you just told them was bullshit, how do you take that as a person? As a person, I, if I'm lying, I understand that and I take it as I'm taking bullshit. And if I'm not lying, I say that they're full of bullshit. And if, they, if someone tells you that or you tell someone that, does that mean that what they just told you you don't believe or you do believe? Possibly that I don't believe him. Did you ever tell Detective Quinn that you felt like Brian Ransom knew the people who borrowed the car? The whole time I believe that Brian knew them, yes. And specifically the people who got in the car? Um, I believed he knew everybody. So not specifically, but I felt like everybody, he knew them. So obviously, yes, I believe that. And was your car them. being used, was it being used as a favor? Um... I wouldn't, I don't know if he actually was doing that favor for them or what. Didn't you tell Detective Quinn, obviously this dude knows this cat, is doing a favor? Well, that's what I would assume, yes. Have you been following this case since you were speaking to testify? No. How did you feel, how did you feel when you got to uh, I felt like it was a jury duty thing. I didn't pay much attention to it. My involvement in this was very small. I thought it could just blow over. And no, I kept getting bothered. My mom kept getting bothered. My brothers were getting bothered. Um, so I just kind of felt I should see what's up with it. And now I know the grand scheme of it, I feel like, or at least how more complicated it is than what I thought, so. Uh, that, that's fair. Um, has this case caused any trouble in your house? Yes. Why? Um, this is something I wanted to put behind me. This is something I didn't want to ever really, I didn't think it was gonna be like that. I've worked so hard to get myself straight. I'm a recovering heroin addict. Um, I've been through a lot and I feel like this was way in the past. And didn't really feel like bringing up this story to any one of my family members. Ever since they have found out that I am, I am the one with the RICO charge. So it is very, uh, it's sad, to say the least. I'm did, getting... Did you ever, were you ever offered to have anyone from the DA's office come meet you and talk about that day? I don't exactly know who has been calling and wanting to meet, but there's been very many people, I believe, calling to want to meet for testimonies. Sir. 
Why did you not let them come meet you and talk about it? Because I thought my part in this was very irrelevant. Did they ever ask you if they could meet on Zoom? Um, don't recall that. Did they ever ask you if they could meet on Microsoft Zoom? I don't remember that. I don't ever, even know what those are. Did they ever uh, ask you to speak over the phone? That I have spoken over the phone. Did they ever ask you to talk about what you remember from that day over the phone? Several times. Um, did you only want to speak on the day of your testimony? I felt like it wasn't necessary. I didn't, honestly, to this day, didn't think I needed to speak ever. Did you, did you ever say if you got an email, did you have to read it? Um, I don't read emails. Um, that's just... Did you ever get the marijuana that you went to that house to buy? No. So, Attorney Brown was did so bad in court today. It was ridiculous. Let's just be fair, swear, obvious, and honest. The judge had to go with, yeah, let's go ahead and go with what Bill Nye, the science guy, has to say. Bro, the fact, in the first clip, the biologist says, I don't want to open this because it's going to compromise it, which means we cannot use these samples ever again. And then the judge like, I agree with him. And then buddy kind of push it on a little bit more. And then do like, man, listen, if y'all gave me proper PPE in a controlled room with whatever masks they need, with gloves, and he said with bleach, but we had to do it outside of the courtroom. And the judge is like, let's just hold off on that. Bruh, that's number one. Number two, as y'all heard in the last couple of seconds of that clip that was just played, this is just dumb. Dumb. You didn't prep the dude before you talked to him. Y'all tried to talk to him. He didn't really think of anything where it seemed like he was going to help y'all out. He completely destroyed everything that y'all said. And then on top of that, he said he was facing a RICO. So y'all was going to charge this man with a RICO for essentially not helping y'all? That's crazy. And then on top of that, he literally got on the stand and said, my car wasn't stolen. You got to remember, part of what they're trying to say is that that vehicle was stolen. Uh, No, it wasn't. But he did kind of help out the case because he said they were going there to buy drugs now if they want to draw any inferences from that but he never knew anybody's name he didn't know who he was buying drugs from so there's that then he said that his homie brian he trusted him which means that if he trusted him brian trusted those people that he let ball that car doesn't know how many people was in there doesn't know the description of anybody didn't see what y'all thought he was gonna see Told the cops initially that his car was stolen. Then the cop called him out like, bro, you're lying. And then proceeded to destroy everything else. And I told y'all, bro, Keith Adams is that that, that dude, bro. I'm, the video I'm going to drop tomorrow, I got some inside information. And I think y'all really, really going to want to tune up and basically pull up. It'll drop around the same time tomorrow morning. And I ain't going to hold you. This was a horrible last two days. Like, I don't think it could have been any worse because at least when you start learning that the person that you're talking to isn't doing what you need them to do, you slightly got to pivot. These morons decided, let's go further into it. This fool said, yeah, I was lying. What were you basically lying about? The whole thing. I was just saying anything to essentially get out of trouble. Then they make him go further. Yeah, I, I used to be a drug addict. I used to be a heroin addict. I'm a recovering heroin addict. <laughs> like, you can't make this up, bro. This was a cold L. A cold L for the defense. They took two massive back-to-back L's, and I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I don't know if, if Brown gonna be coming back. Brown was an infectious, dumb disease, and I'm pretty sure in his own right, he's a good attorney, but the spotlight was way too big on him, way too big. Right, they they had him get objected four times in a row, and the judge is like, yeah, stop saying that. To the point where the judge had to jump in and say, you might want to ask it like this. 
Judge, you can't be giving alley oops out here, man. He didn't sprint down the court all the way. No. You can't have him set up a pick and then throw that alley oop. No. He need to go ahead, get that rebound, toss it to somebody, and run full speed, and then you can throw him the alley oop. That's what basically he should have did. And if you don't get what I mean when I say that is, he should have been laying down the work and doing good and then fumbled a little bit, and then you could have helped him out. None of that crap happened. He went up there. He looked stupid. Miss Love, she knew. She must have had to know, bro. Like, I, I ain't going to hold you. When I'm walking back to that office, I'm finna nudge somebody like, hey, yeah, bro, I need to talk to y'all because what the hell was that? Y'all made me look bad. Y'all made me look bad. It looked like I'm going to spend the rest of my life here making whatever money y'all pay me because y'all just left me out to dry. Bro, that was bad. Like, imagine if somebody was on your team and they did you that way. That's the equivalent of me giving you a whole bunch of stuff and saying, all right, bro, now I want you to lead the team and you don't know how to use any of this stuff. You got a familiarity of like, all right, this shoots, this hammers, and this sticks, but I don't know how to do anything. This is bad, bro, but what y'all expect? This case is BS, bro. Where was the conspiracy part of this? He might have just gotten rid of the whole conspiracy part of this. Yeah, they committed a crime. All right, cool. But what was the overall thing? Trying to get away from the police. People do that every single day. Are they now conspirators? Nobody wants to go to jail. I'm sorry. That's why a lot of people don't commit crimes. I don't commit crimes because I don't want to go to jail. Ain't y'all been nobody in jail? <sighs> Subscribe, turn on the bell, stay notified, and share to keep your people aware. Brett, this right here was dumb. We had Bill Nye, the science guy, and we had Morbius in there just making today, well, technically yesterday, look like a mockery. I don't know how y'all feel about this case, but what I can tell y'all is, is that this was bad. But, hey, we're going to post again as soon as the court is done today. It's going to be a short day today. So at about 7 o'clock Eastern, we're going to post the video 6 o'clock, uh, what, Central Time. So that's y'all in Alabama, Tennessee, or half of Tennessee, like Nashville and stuff like that. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, whatever. And then all y'all in the ABQ and all that and everything like that. Y'all going to get it at 4. I mean, y'all going to get it at Five? Yeah, West Coast going to get it at four. I'll catch you on the next one. If you like the gear, you know what I'm saying, you like this real quick, you need to holler at me, you want one, man, jump in the inbox, so I'll hit you with the pricing, and then we'll get it done for y'all. But until then, I'll catch you on the next one. Well, later on today.